Hey there folks, welcome to Spectrum Pulse. We talk about music, movies, art, and culture. And today we've got another unscripted movie review, this time talking about the newest horror film, It. Here's the funny thing. For as much as a lot of people have said this has been a really, really strong year for horror in 2017, it's kind of funny hearing that because I'm not really much of a horror fan. Yeah, I've seen a bunch of horror movies. I don't mind watching exploitation movies, so inevitably there's going to be some crossover. But the whole principle of seeing movies in order to get scared, a lot of the jump scare thing, following up with a lot of the torture porn that afflicted the genre over extended parts of its history, a lot of horror just doesn't really do it for me. And you know what, I can admit that, and even though saying that some of my favorite films thus far this year have lied more toward in the horror spectrum. Take a look at Get Out, even though that's more half satire, is aiming to do a little bit more with it. The funny thing with It is that it falls into a similar category. And yes, it's also a pretty damn great movie on its own. Now for those of you who don't know, It is an adaptation of the Stephen King novel, and in this case the first half of that Stephen King novel, focusing specifically on the child set of characters in Derry, Maine, in comparison with the adult set of characters that will show up in the inevitable sequel. Now, this has actually been adapted before, a TV miniseries that starred Tim Curry in one of his most iconic roles, and I've seen it doesn't quite hold up as much as you might think, just gotta stress that. But at the same time, going into this, you're only telling about half the story, but that also allows a greater sense of narrative focus, something that's always kind of eluded anybody trying to adapt a Stephen King novel. Now look, I'm not the biggest fan of Stephen King for a wealth of reasons. I have read enough of it that I got a lot of the thematic arcs when it comes to dealing and confronting fear, at the larger case, dealing and confronting with grief at loss and being able to effectively reconcile that. And honestly, that's a pretty powerful message, and that also allows you to streamline a movie where you're just going to be focusing more on the kids and the scary clown, and less of the buried, twisted, supernatural elements that come in when the adults enter the picture. Now, the interesting thing that this adaptation does is that it actually moves up the timeline. Instead of these kids being in the 60s, it's the kids now in the 80s. And you know what? I kind of love that change because it moves the kids up into an arc where you'd see them more approximated by a movie like Stand By Me. And this film does feel very much like it's crossing your typical kids coming together, random group of outcasts, you have the bullies that are fighting against them, crossed with the horror story at the depths of it. And you know what? I kind of really like that fusion because the director knows how to balance these two out really well. The kid actors, they're all good. They never feel all that wooden and they actually deliver a lot of the dialogue with a very kid appropriate tone as in that they swear and overcompensate for each other and I really did like and appreciate that. And at the same time, you also get the sense that they are very much small people in a much bigger world. Part of this is shown through a lot of the cinematography with usage of Dutch angles and really a lot of close-ups in terms of being able to pull in that darker, more impressive, these things are bigger and larger than you, that greater lurking mass in the background that can only be described as it. But of course, I think the standout performance here is Pennywise, played by Bill Skarsgård. I don't think you're ever going to be able to replace Tim Curry. What he did in that role is kind of iconic. It's the reason why that miniseries is remembered at all, let's be real here. But at the same time, what Bill Skarsgård does with the character and some of the body horror that comes around that character and in terms of that weird manic sort of desperate side to that character that ever-ceasing hunger it is one of the most impressive turns they do with that element and in terms of intensifying the horror side of this story it's a movie that earns its hard R and it feels it. I actually really did like how dark and twisted this film actually got. Unfortunately this is where we're gonna run to my biggest complaint with the movie and that comes in some of the special effects. Look I like a lot of the stuff they do when it feels a little bit more naturalist, and I'm always going to be a fan of practical effects over CGI. That's just me. And it comes from seeing a lot of horror movies that made incredible things out of practical effects. Now, there were some things here and some effects that you would expect in a Stephen King-related property that you would never effectively be able to replicate with practical effects. I mean, we've seen them try before. But at the same time, what they do with special effects, you can tell that there were some points where, well, you could have used practical and you cut corners by doing it and you could have been a little bit more careful in terms of setting some of the things up. Now, there are some special effects that are absolutely freaking terrifying and I will give them 
a lot of props for especially the bonkers third act of this movie. But at the same time, a lot of that is benefited by a lot of the effects happening in low to middling light. Whereas some of the effects that are taking place more in an open, brighter setting, which a lot of the scares actually do, which is a credit to the director to actually make them actually pretty effective, it's a little bit distracting when some of those special effects aren't quite as good as they otherwise should be. Now, all that being said, this really is a terrific adaptation. I like the thematic cohesion. I like the fact that it actually hits the main points and the actors are credible in delivering them. I love the atmosphere and the attention to detail, which you kind of have to be able to bring in for a Stephen King adaptation. I like how the bullies are so somewhat sympathetic at points while still being very much bullies. I like how much this film entrenches itself in 80s iconography, but not to the point where it actively gets distracting, but there are some really cute references that I like. Of course, gender politics, given that this is a Stephen King adaptation, it does come in. That's more of a crime of the actual adaptation and the original source material. I'm not really gonna blame that for what you see here. It's just, it was written in a very different time and at points you can tell. Now at the same time, if you're going in expecting a lot of the supernatural elements or a lot of the heavier foreshadowing that will eventually come, I didn't pick up on much of that, but at the same time, I think the refined focus specifically on the kids and this story, twisting it beyond your typical haunted house story and bringing in some of both that teenage growth and maturity while also facing the adult ideas and some really terrifying adult characters, but also placing it in context and showing it from a lot of that kid's point of view, I think that does the film a really strong thematic purpose. And ultimately, at the end of the film, while it is still terrifying, the arc I think is well enough realized that I can definitely appreciate it. And you know what? I've been looking forward to seeing part two. And again, credit to the director for staging so many of the scares very effectively with not with the gore when it's there it's there it's effective gore and these kids really do take a punishment i will give them props for that a lot of the direction is top of the line i'm really impressed how well the horror elements came together while still bringing in a lot of your traditional stephen king points in terms of that existential horror a lot of the dairy main set details that have always been quintessential at adapting anything from stephen king i like the appreciation of detail here. I like the fact this film actually took its time and actually built out its tension while never feeling like it's really lagging in spots. And that was kind of impressive because I was just as invested in the kid stand by me growth and drama that was outside of the traditional horror elements that I was actually in the horror itself. So again, marrying those two effectively and making it such a compelling film as it is, I gotta be honest, I like this a lot more than I like a lot of horror. So yeah, I'm looking forward to part two. I'm giving this a solid 8 out of 10. Definitely see this. There's a reason this is one of the highest grossing horror films ever. And you know what? It's actually worth it. I think it holds up better than the miniseries. But again, the miniseries captured both parts of the book. So we'll have to wait to see how the adult side turns out. And if you're wondering if I'm going to do any specific jump scare or anything like that, just to really draw attention to the right points, like... <laughs> nah, I'm good. Until next time, I'm Mark, you're watching Spectrum Pulse, and I'll see you next time.